I got up early, he said. Early? It sounded strange, but why did it sound strange? Dan, is anything wrong? Wrong? No, nothing's wrong. I just wanted to get up, that's all. Tina dressed. She smiled brightly. It's time for breakfast, she said. Come on, we mustn't be late. Woo! He was going to say, why not? But he didn't. He stood up. Yes, yes, it's time for breakfast. Look, you go down for breakfast. I'm not hungry today. I'll see you later. Tina looked at him. We have to go to breakfast. Are you feeling ill? I'll call the doctor. The doctor? Yes, he had to go to breakfast. He didn't want to see the doctor. Tina was standing by the door. She looked annoyed. Tina, he said. I didn't eat anything yesterday or the day before, and I feel different. Tina moved towards the phone. Of course you feel different, Dan. You are ill. I'll get the doctor. Don't phone, Tina. Please, he said. I wanted to feel hungry. I haven't felt hungry for, for a long time. I wanted to remember the feeling. She looked worried. I don't understand, she said. Nobody wants to feel hungry. That's it. Nobody wants to feel hungry. Nobody wants to feel unhappy. Nobody wants to feel anything. Yesterday and the day before, I didn't eat. Nobody noticed. I threw the food away. And now I'm beginning to remember things. I think there's something in the food. A drug. Because of the drug, we can't remember things. Tina's face was red. You're crazy, she said quietly. Maybe, he said. But why can't we remember anything? What is this place? It's our home, she said slowly. Our home? When did we come here? Er, I don't know, Dan. Is it important? Where were we before we came here? He shook her arm angrily. Why did we come? We, we... Oh, Dan, I can't remember. Don't worry about it. Look, don't be silly. We're going to be very busy today. First, there's the pottery class. You'll be able to finish making that bowl. Then we're going to go swimming, then lunch. Then we can lie beside the swimming pool before tennis. Then there's dinner. Then we can watch the new videos in the video room, have a drink and go to bed. We'll be exhausted. Exhausted? At eight o'clock? Well, yes, that's bedtime. We need twelve hours sleep a night. Everybody says that. Tina, how long have we been here? I don't know, Dan. We call this place home. Don't you remember? We used to call it a holiday. We used to call this our hotel room. Now we call it home. I don't remember that. That's stupid. No, it isn't, Tina. 
I remembered this morning when I woke up early. Perhaps you didn't wake up, Dan. Perhaps you had a dream. A strange dream, that's all. But I did wake up, Tina. You saw me. I was sitting in that chair with all my clothes on. I'm not sure. Were you? I can't remember now. She smiled at him. Come on, the sun's shining. It's another beautiful day. Let's go and have breakfast. She opened the door. Dan looked at her for a moment. You've forgotten our conversation, haven't you? He said. You've forgotten it already. Dan followed her into the corridor. He looked at the rows of doors on both sides. They were all the same. They walked along to the lift. Tina pushed the button and the doors opened. Morning, Tina. Morning, Dan. Russell, the sports organizer, was already in the lift. He smiled. I hope you're both ready for the tennis match, he said. We're playing level 14 this afternoon. They've got some good players. Tina laughed. Level 5, level 5, she sang. Level 5 is really alive. It was their team song. The lift went down to the restaurant level. They joined the long line of people. They were all waiting for breakfast. Dan looked around. Everyone was wearing shorts and t-shirts, the men and the women. Dan looked down at his t-shirt. It was light blue, the level five color. His shorts were light blue, too. There were different colors for all the levels. The man in front of him was wearing a yellow level 9 t-shirt. Oh, good, said Tina. Cornflakes. I love cornflakes. So do I, said Russell. Dan smiled. Everyday breakfast was cornflakes with thin milk. Every day Tina seemed pleased with it. She always seemed pleased with lunch, too. And dinner. Everybody seemed pleased. He thought about the food. Lunch was usually soup and some bread. Dinner was usually soup and some kind of rice. They sometimes had a little meat or fish, but not often. But they were never hungry. Dan took a tray, a bowl of cornflakes, and a vitamin drink. He followed Tina and Russell towards the tables. The restaurant had big windows, and through them you could see the large swimming pool. The families with children all lived on the other side of the pool. On this side, there were only people without children. Dan stopped and thought, And none of us ever have children. And the youngest children on the other side are 10 or 11 years old. They used to be younger. He could remember babies. So, no children are born here, and the youngest children are 10 or 11. Dan waited for a moment. He put his tray down on an empty table. It was difficult. Thinking was difficult. So maybe that's how long we've been here. Ten or eleven years? He felt pleased with himself. 
He looked around quickly. Nobody was watching him. He picked up his tray again and walked over to the waste disposal unit. Quickly, he threw the food and drink away. He looked around again. No, nobody saw him. He started to walk to Tina's table. And there are no sick people, he thought. Nobody was watching him. He picked up his tray again and walked over to the waste disposal unit. They take them to a hospital somewhere. Nobody else leaves. Never. He stopped. There was Jack. Jack went to hospital. But when? He walked over to Jack's table. Jack, good morning, he said. Good morning, Dan. Lovely day, isn't it? How's your leg, Jack? Is it better? Jack looked surprised. My leg? There's nothing wrong with my leg. Don't you remember, Jack? You hurt your leg. You cut it by the swimming pool. I was with you. You fell on a bottle and it broke and cut you badly. They took you to hospital. You went in a helicopter. Jack stopped eating. He looked worried for a moment. Then he laughed. I've never been to hospital in my life, he said. And I've never been in a helicopter. Is this a joke? Dan looked down. Jack was wearing green level 11 shorts. He could see the long red scar on Jack's leg. He looked at Jack again. Jack was smiling. Dan, are you all right? It was Russell. He was standing behind him. I was just talking to Jack about his leg. He cut his leg when we were at the swimming pool. Look, there's the scar. You remember, Russell? He fell on a bottle. You carried him to the helicopter. Russell wasn't smiling. Dan, can you come to my office after breakfast? I want to talk to you. Dan looked at Russell carefully. Russell was the sports organizer for Level 5. There were a lot of organizers. They all lived on the highest level of the building, Level 20. There were organizers for sports, pottery, yoga, music, everything. He walked to the lifts. He got to the lifts, pushed the button, and the door opened immediately. Dan stepped in. Russell was hurrying along the corridor towards him. Dan pushed a button and the doors closed. Dan looked at the buttons. There were 20 levels. He pushed number 20. Sunny Vista City was built on both sides of a deep valley. The swimming pools and sports areas were at the bottom of the valley. The rooms were against the sides of the valley. At both ends of the valley were the offices for the organizers. The city was about two kilometers long. Helicopters flew into the city every day. They always landed on the roof of the 20th level. The lift stopped. Dan walked out. The corridor was empty. The rooms were bigger here. There was a bigger distance between the doors. Then he heard a noise. It was a bell. The door of the next lift was opening. Dan stepped back.
Russell was coming out of the lift door. Dan, said Russell, what are you doing? This is level 20. You shouldn't be here. Why not? said Dan. And why are you following me? I must speak to you, said Russell. It's important. Dan looked at Russell. Russell was looking at the wall next to the lift.